Hello there guys and welcome back to another review and today I will be taking a look at the brand new Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series Styracosaurus albertensis. Now before we take a look at this gorgeous looking figure I'm just going to bring in the box as all of the figures come in a really nice box. Now this is actually one of the larger boxes as you can see top it says we have Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series 118th scale dinosaur action figures with some really nice artwork here of the Styracosaurus really beautiful artwork there you can see that's how it comes packaged see there's a background there uh, on the top say 20 points of articulation realistic movement and detail profile card included it's number two Styracosaurus albertensis you can see it's uh, the writing is quite shiny on the back, you can see this is what comes inside. So it gives you some info here, which I will uh, go over with the card. And then on the back, if I just take the sleeve off, as you can see, there is all the other ceratopsians in the range. I have reviewed the Zuni ceratops. We'll be taking a look at the Styracosaurus today. And then I will be uh, also looking at the Juvenile Centrosaurus, which is not on uh, the back here. Uh, on the top, we've got the Beast of Mesozoic logo. So the uh, Triceratops image there, on the bottom says who the sculpt and design is by, far from extinct, box art as well. So yeah, so a uh, very nice box. And it also comes with a collectible card and uh, this. Now this just shows you how to put the tail on, as the tail is a separate piece. So I would actually recommend either the hot water method, which it shows, or the hairdryer method. So just heat up the ball joint and also the end of the tail and it should hopefully slot in correctly. Here is the card that comes with it. On the back you have the artwork of the Styracosaurus. And then on here it shows the figure itself and has some information. Styracosaurus albertensis, spiked lizard, up to 18 feet long, was found in the Dinosaur Park formation in Alberta, Canada. Lived in the late Cretaceous period, 75 million years ago, and was named by Lawrence Lambe in 1913. Famously known for its six frill spikes and long nose horn, Styracosaurus is one of the most recognisable of all the Ceratopsians. Despite its iconic look, similarities to Centrosaurus have caused debate in the past over which specimens belonged to each species. I find that very interesting. So if you want to just pause up there, you can also have a proper look yourself. Just pop that over to the side and here we have the Styracosaurus himself and wow all I can say is what an imposing and beautifully colored figure I mean this is out standing the coloration that uh, he gave this is amazing and I I just I, I think this is one of the best Ceratopsians in the line so far just a wonderful, wonderful figure. So without further ado, let's take a look at the figure. Let's have a look at the head. The head is wonderfully done, as you can see here. We have the nostrils on the side there. The beak has been very nicely sculpted. We've got all these lovely scale work around the, the head here. We have the, the jugal horn here and the epicytals around the frill. The large, six large spikes on the frill. Very long nose horn, which has been got some nice weathering detail on it, which I very much, I I like very much. So two spikes at the top of here with the frill. A few hornlets above the eyes. All this beautiful coloration with this uh, this red, green, yellow, and orange on, and blue on the frill. I think it works very very nicely. Eyes also been nicely done. You can even see right in there. I think is where the ear would be. See, but yeah, the eyes been nicely sculpted. Some nice sculpt work on the back of the frill there. The back of the neck. As we go down. Some really nice sculpt work on the body. We've got some also some nice scoots on here as well. The limbs are nicely done. You can see all that nice scale work. There are the toes. We've got three toes on the ground and two that don't touch the ground which is correct on the back here we've got four toes 
nicely done as well. I love the scale work here on the on the back legs. I mean, look at all the, the scale. I mean, how he's managed to do all that. That is really, really nice. I love that. It's quite also it's quite a large, quite beefy looking animal, as it should be. There's some more nice scale work. A couple of scoots, small spikes going down the back. Some spikes here along the tail. Going over to the other side as well. Some nice striping on the tail here. I really just love these scales on this back on these back legs. They look absolutely amazing. But yeah, I mean, this color scheme is like it's just fantastic. I mean, the lizard that he used. I cannot, for the life of me, remember what species of lizard it is that it's based on, but I know it is quite a very colourful lizard, and I think the colour scheme uh, that he's done for it has worked incredibly well. I mean, especially as Styracosaurus is one of the more striking members of the Ceratopsians, with these very long frill horns and long nose horn. But yeah, just. I think this colour scheme works um, amazingly well and as dinosaurs are related to birds they would have had the bird-like eyes that probably showed a quite a high amount intensity of colour, more so than we can, so they probably relied a lot more on colour, even for the herbivores, so I think a colour scheme like this is not out of the question. Now the articulation is uh, very very good, so we have a ball joint of the head. The neck also turns left and right and up and down. There is a bit of jaw articulation and even inside you can see the tongue in there. Now that can also move uh, if you have like um, a bit of tweezers in fact. Give me one second. Here we are. got my trusty pair of tweezers. So if we just go a bit further in. You can see that the tongue is also articulated. One of the first to actually implement that as it is one of the larger figures. You can even see the teeth have been sculpted in there as well which is very very nice. Uh, the forelimbs can move back and forth. There is an elbow joint as well and there is also the wrist articulation that can move around and up and down. We have a diaphragm joint, so that can turn the figure and also uh, tilt slightly to the left and right. We also have the, the back of the hind legs, they can move back and forth. There's a knee joint, there is also an ankle joint, and there is a foot joint as well that can, can turn the feet themselves see there so they can turn as well to left and right and then of course there is the tail which can move left to right and do the 360 degrees but of course we know that they wouldn't be able to do that in real life <laughs> but no it really does allow you to get this dinosaur into some really great poses so I am really a big fan of this art of the beast of the Mesozoic dinosaurs I think everyone is so you can really get them into some great uh, poses, which is really, really cool. Uh, just for a little comparison, here is the Zuniceratops that I have reviewed previously. As you can see, the Styracosaurus dwarfs the Zuniceratops. You can just hear a bird in the garden. Huh. Ironic. <laughs> because, yeah, the... It is absolutely dwarfed as Zuniceratops was one of the earliest known sort of primitive brow horn ceratopsians, if you want to call them that. So, uh, so yeah, it's quite interesting to see this. Uh, Starachosaurus was about 18 feet. Zuniceratops was about 10 feet long. So I think this scale actually works really, really well as they are all in scale with each other. Uh, so yeah, and I will also bring in, which is actually coming up for review very soon, the Centrosaurus. 
This is the juvenile, as you can see. They also scale very well. Of course, it's dwarf because of you know, these horns at the back. The epicytals are really, really long and large. But yeah, this one will be coming up for review very soon. I will actually leave a link to the Zuniceratops review in the description box below. So please go and check that out. So um, I am a huge fan of the Beast of the Mesozoic line and I absolutely adore this Styracosaurus. It is one of the more expensive options at $51.99 on everything dinosaur, which I will leave a link to in the description box below, where you can purchase the Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsians as well as the Beast of the Mesozoic Raptor line and all the other models that they sell on their website. So go and check them out. And you can also follow Beast of the Mesozoic or Creative Beast on Facebook as well. So you type in Cre Creative Beast, you can follow their page on Facebook. Uh, so yeah, I am just blown away. I keep getting blown away by these figures. I mean, I only have three Ceratopsians and four Raptors, but already I am loving the Ceratopsian range. Ceratopsians are some of my favorite dinosaurs and Styracosaurus is one of my favorite Ceratopsians. And I think this might possibly be my favorite Styracosaurus figure in my collection. I am in love with it and I love the color scheme. I, I just think it's, it's a fantastic figure. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. I, I will be checking out the Beast of the Mesozoic Juvenile Cer Centrosaurus very soon. So take a look out for that. So uh, please take care, guys. Please stay safe and please wear your masks. Take care, guys. Bye.